nine, press star six or pound six. Um, just before we get into the actual presentation, I wanted to take a few minutes to go over Tech Data's value add, uh, primarily one of the reasons you're here, of course, and let you know what other kind of offerings we've got here that you can take advantage of with Tech Data. So the first, obviously, is that we've got a huge VMware dedicated team now. Um, it's a big list. You're going to get this presentation sent out to you, so you don't have to remember all of these email addresses, but there's definitely somebody to go to for all your VMware needs over here. Second up, I'm sure the majority of you are actually here because of our Tech Data exclusive training camp program. Um, you guys, as members of the training camp program, have dedicated training camp coaches for everything VMware. They're here to help with the growth of your VMware business. Um, we've also got exclusive webinars such as this one. Training camp also gives you ex uh, extra discounts, sponsored certification training, uh, marketing funds, and lead generation opportunities. Um, best part of it, of course, is it's all free. This is the uh, list of training camp coaches here on the training camp team. You can uh, see that handsome fellow at the bottom left-hand corner. That's me. Oh, my wife tells me that anyway, so I still believe her. And uh, those aren't all actually the, the benefits you get when you partner up with Tech Data. I also want to introduce uh, Tech Data's exclusive VMware app. It's called Mbytes TD. Uh, Mbytes TD is a free app on the App Store and the Google Play Store. We positioned it to make you an instant VMware expert. The app includes cheat sheets, sales materials, presentations, data sheets, competitive info, prospecting guides, uh, customer-ready emails even, you name it. It's actually just what you need to grow your VMware business, and it's right at your fingertips. Uh, like I said, we'll be sending out this presentation, and these images are all linked, so you can just click on them to go straight to the store and, and download the app. And last but not least, we've got our uh, Tech Data Solutions Center. 6,000 square feet of seminars, trainings, and demos for you. You can use them for yourself for pre-sales uh, support. You can also bring in your end users, and uh, we can get some demos done for them if you can't do it on site for yourself. And there's even sandbox environments available for you to take advantage of. You actually want to have something to play around with with your end users. And with that, I'm uh, going to get into it. I don't know if uh, Jeff, Frank, if you want to say a quick hi. Hey guys, Jeff Hunter here from VMware. Thanks for having me. Hi, Frank Torrance from Micro. Again, thanks for having me as well, and uh, we'll get into it on the back end. Back yeah, to you guys. And, uh, definitely, let's not forget uh, one of the other reasons that some, some of us are here. Uh, there will be an Apple TV giveaway uh, courtesy of Trend Micro at the end, uh, random draw, so stay tuned for that too. By the way, I'd just like to let everyone know, I'm sorry, I didn't want to forget this. Um, you are all muted, and because of that, if there are any questions as we go along or anything you want answered, you will have a chat box through the WebEx. You can just type your questions into the chat box. It will be monitored, and we will get your questions answered. With that, let's get started. Today, I wanted to present, uh, present to you VDPA. A couple of months ago, we announced the best thing in backup and recovery for a VMware environment. VDPA is an in-house solution that's going to make you money. And today I'm going to tell you why your customers want it and how you can get it for them. The most of you that are on the call here, you face the day-to-day -day challenge of working with and recommending a wide variety of software to your uh, clients. Your phones are ringing, emails are pouring in, work is piling up. With all the choices out there, it's definitely hard to pick the best one. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is just stick to what you know or what the other guy uses even though it may actually be less cost effective and cost you more to manage afterwards. But let's say we actually stop for a minute to think about the best, and we ask ourselves a simple question. What makes good software great? You see, good software does its job, but great software does it, and it shows you returns. It shows you a return on your time and a return on your investment. And VDPA was actually designed great. And great came from the idea that if we were going to be successful in the backup space, we needed to do what other guys weren't doing. We needed to make the backup solution simple, efficient, and profitable for everyone involved. So let's look at simple first. I want to take a step back and look at the other guys. They all have their backup products, their offerings, and they all tell you the same thing, that they do a better job than the other guys. A good job. But there's a problem. And as we get closer to the software-defined data center ideal, it's going to be a problem for you and a problem for your customers. 
They're third party. You run them outside of your VMware environment. They're separate programs that actually require their own trainings and their own certifications. It means more of your time and money. It means more management, less optimization, and they use it as a launching platform to drag you into a world of third-party utilities that you probably don't even need. So again, more trainings, more investment, more wasted time, more wasted money. And to top it all off, they're basically the same. But they offer multiple versions of the exact same software at different price points, and they market, market them as options. Well, we may as well call it crippleware because, let's face it, this is backup software, and most companies need all the features you only find in their most expensive versions anyway. Thanks a little. Yeah, I can not right now. No, no, no. Sorry, no, 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 no. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Looks like a couple of us are muted. Now, VDPA, one version with full functionality. It gives you everything you need. Well, okay, I'm, I'm lying, actually. There's two versions, but one is free because, you know, some of you only need to do basic local backups without wasting money on the other guy's entry-level products. That's available, too. But in VDPA, you've got a familiar interface right inside the vSphere web client. Backup, restore, replication, reports, and configuration. It's an end-to-end -end user interface with everything at your fingertips. Wizards are available to speed up the process and automate, it, automate the parts you shouldn't have to waste your time on. It's all optimized and supported from the ground up by VMware. Now under the hood, you're going to find the extras you'd expect and a few you won't find anywhere else. One-step virtual machine recovery, point and click, individual file level restores if you need to recover that one lost expense report or email, and next up, and I know this is a big one, VDPA now handles exchange, SQL and SharePoint in non-virtualized environments. Yeah, so for those end users who prefer to keep their Exchange servers on a physical host, we've got them covered too. And finally, we have integration with EMC's data domain. It couldn't be easier or more efficient to re replicate your backups than this. Everything that you're seeing here is comparable to the Enterprise or Enterprise Plus offerings of the competition, but it's better and it's faster. And now, uh, we actually want to show it to you. So I'm going to cue Jeff Hunter over here to give us a bit of a demo. Jeff, are you ready? Yep, sure thing. All right. Over to you. All right, I'm going to share my desktop here. And what I have is vSphere 5.5 update 1 running along with vCenter 5.5. I've got uh, vSphere data protection 5.5 installed as well. And by the way, if, uh, if you have customers that are out there that are still on 5.1 when it comes to vCenter, that's okay. You can run vSphere Data Protection 5.5 with vCenter 5.1 and higher. As a matter of fact, there may be some customers out there that have vCenter 5.1 and maybe they're still running VDP Advanced 5.1. It's, it's a good idea to go ahead and get them upgraded for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, they can take advantage of some of the new features and functionality, uh, such as the ability to back up SharePoint, uh, some of the replication that we have built into VDP Advanced now. And, of course, there are bug fixes and, and updates and, and performance improvements and all that good stuff, too, with the latest version. So make sure you get your customers upgraded to uh, 5.5, even if they're still on 5.1. And then if you're curious about the vSphere versions, so ESXi, in other words, what version uh, that is supported with uh, VDP and VDP Advanced 5.5, uh, you can go back as far as 4.1. So even if you have customers on vSphere 4.1, they're managing it with vCenter 5.1, that's okay. VDP Advanced will support that type of environment there. Uh, we just talked about a moment ago how simple the product is. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that it's very easy and quick to deploy. As a matter of fact, you can deploy a VDP Advanced appliance in about an hour or so. It may take a little bit longer if you run the storage analysis test, which is a good idea. But uh, my point being is that maybe an hour to two hours you go from zero to being able to perform your first backup. As you can see, it's built into the vSphere web client. I would simply uh, select vSphere Data Protection 5.5, and then of course you can see the various tabs here in the center of the page. I'm going to go ahead and click on backup, and uh, this is my lab environment here, so it's a bit smaller than maybe what you would find in a customer production environment, but I've got a handful of VMs and a few backup jobs running. And I just want to walk you through a backup job very quickly just to show you how few steps it takes to get this going. So I'm going to edit that for the sake of time. And our first thing that we're going to be doing here is, is it's going to be asking what type of backup we want to perform. Now, as we know, VDP Advanced can perform both virtual machine backup and application-level backup. 
As a matter of fact, we have agents for SQL Server, Exchange, and SharePoint. In this particular case, I'm going to show an entire virtual machine backup. Uh, you can see here where I can select individual virtual machines or I can select containers as well. As a matter of fact, I have this production container selected. And by virtue of selecting that container, all of the virtual machines in that production resource pool are ready for backup. They're automatically selected there. If I would add additional virtual machines after the fact to that resource pool, they would automatically start being included in this backup job as well. I click Next. Uh, here I have a couple of options. You can see that I have the option to either save the backup data in the VDP Advanced Virtual Appliance itself, or if I have EMC's data domain connected to VDP Advanced, which by the way, that is fully supported, works great. DBoost is utilized as part of that uh, pairing. And in this case, that's what I have going on here. I've got data domain deployed out there, so I'm going to use that as my destination where that backup data is going to end up. I click Next. Here are the options for scheduling. Pretty straightforward. Daily, weekly, or monthly, I can select a very specific start time. So if I wanted to start this backup, for example, at 426 a.m., I can definitely do that with VDP Advanced. One more thing I need to add in here is a retention policy. By default, it's going to show 60 days. I have this particular backup job set to five days. I could also create uh, a, a static date and time here. So maybe I want to keep this particular backup until uh, June 15th or I can even create a custom schedule if that makes sense. I'm gonna go back to that option there. I click Next, give the job a name, and finish, and that is all there is to it in creating a backup job. Once I have a backup job created, I can either wait until it runs at the scheduled time, or if it makes sense, I can hit Backup Now, and I can back up either all the sources, which means every virtual machine in that backup job gets backed up regardless of the last time it was backed up, or I can back up only out-of-date sources here. In that case, let's say we uh, maybe we missed one of the virtual machines. For one reason or another, it didn't back up properly. Maybe there was an existing snapshot out there that caused some issues or something along that line. We can go back. We can run this, this job manually and tell it to back up just those missed VMs, which, of course, would only take a few minutes because we are backing up only the changed blocks of that particular virtual machine out there. So that's all there is to it when it comes to a backup job. I'll take a few more minutes here and show you a restore. Very simple as well. You can see the list of virtual machines here that I have backed up previously. And then, of course, I can expand that list. In this particular case, this is a fairly new environment here, so I only have one backup that's ran so far. But, of course, if there were, you know, this, these jobs have been running for a while, you would see a long list of dates here. I could even go in and I could filter if I wanted to uh, by a specific date, as a matter of fact. So maybe I'm looking for a, a specific backup, maybe back in, like, March or February or something like that, assuming the backups are running then. I can filter by date and I could, I could shorten that list so I can find exactly what I'm looking for. Now in this case, uh, you can see here that uh, we can back up the entire virtual machine, and I could even drill down to the VMDK level if it makes sense to do that too. So in other words, I could pick just an individual hard drive uh, from that particular virtual machine and restore that. So I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'm going to select the entire VM. I hit Restore. As you can see, it shows me a summary of what we're getting ready to do. There's only a couple steps here. It's very simple to perform this restore by default. It'll restore to the original location. And one thing I'll point out here, too, is if we are restoring a, a VM to the original location, that VM still, still exists there. So in other words, we're rolling that back to a previous restore point. We only restore the change blocks, just like we back up only the change blocks. We can, we can restore just the change blocks, too. So rolling back a very large virtual machine may only take just a few minutes if we're restoring just the change blocks between the current state of the VM and that particular restore point. There are a few, a few more options here as well. I can restore to an alternate location. I can give the VM a different name, a different place in the vCenter hierarchy, and of course a different, uh, a different data store if it makes sense. In this case, I am running, uh, running this VM on a vSAN data store. I could power it on, and I could reconnect the NIC if it makes sense, or leave it disconnected. So really that's all there is to it when restoring a virtual machine. One more thing I'll show you here is the file level restore. So VDP and VDP Advanced have the ability to do file level restore. It's done with just a web browser, so I don't have to install an agent or backup software or anything like that in order to do a file level restore. I would simply log in to the file level restore client. So in other words, I've got my web browser pointed directly to the VDP Advanced Appliance. I would click on Manage Mounted Backups. Of course, I get an error message there <laughs> when you know it, live demos. Anyway, what would happen here is it would show a list of restore points. 
and then I would be able to mount that restore point and then go in and select the individual files from that particular um, from that particular restore point there. So again, it's it's a self-service type of environment. In other words, uh, a guest OS administrator or an application owner, something like that, someone with administrative privs on that particular machine would be able to go in there and select the restore point they want to mount to and then drill down in and grab the files out that they want. Uh, incidentally, here's the, the interface for data domain. Just want to show you why it's a good idea to connect VDP Advance to data domain. As you can see here, I just started doing some backups. I backed up a little over 200 gig of data so far, but after deduplication and compression, I am only consuming about 31 and a half gig on the data domain appliance. So I've got about an 85% efficiency when it comes to compression and dedupe. And what that translates into is real savings from a, from a capacity standpoint. I'm not going to have to deploy as much storage out there to, to hold those backups. And, and you'll get this type of deduplication regardless of whether it's data domain or just VDP advanced by itself because VDP advanced does have Avamar's deduplication algorithm in there. So that is going to save you some money as well. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to show there, or should we keep moving? Hey, Jeff. Um, you you kind of touched on it right now. We had a, uh, a question. Uh, what is the advantage of using data domain compared to any, any other storage target? You might have a, an idea of that. Yeah, certainly. So if you think about the way VDP Advanced is deployed, it's deployed as a virtual machine. So in some cases, let's say you've got a remote site or a branch office, something like that. Maybe you're running vSAN out there on four nodes and you have a handful of VMs, and maybe vSAN is your only storage, your only shared storage. So if you think about that, VDP Advanced is actually backing up to the same volume, that same vSAN storage. Now, while, v, while vSAN is extremely resilient, uh, it's always a good idea to keep the backup data and the production data separate. So we could maybe deploy a small data domain appliance out there. That way we're putting the backups on data domain versus the, the same vSAN data store. We're maintaining that ability to do quick restores So since we have VDP advanced locally. And we can also leverage the replication that's in data domain too. So if we wanted to have VDP advanced and data domain as the branch office, and then we have the same setup maybe to, at a primary site or a main data center, we could literally replicate the backup data from that branch office, that remote site, back into the main data center for disaster recovery purposes as well. Uh, and as you can see here, too, the deduplication is fantastic. So you can really squeeze a lot of backup data even into some of the smaller data domain appliances. So quite a few reasons to look at this. Awesome. <laughs> Anything else we should take a look at, or should we keep moving here? I don't want to take up too much time. No, I think that's great. That was uh, that was the main question we had at that point, and that was a wonderful overview of the actual interface and the simplicity of it all. And um, actually, with that, I'd like to get into uh, the efficiency that you just spoke about. Give me just a second here. I'll flip it back over. You're waiting on uh, the slides, correct? Control? Got it. Good to go? Uh, almost. Hang on one moment here. All right. There we go. Thanks again, Jeff. That was good. That was a great demo. And you touched on exactly what I wanted to get at. Um, again, the simplicity of using the product, not only that, but the efficiency as well. When we look, when we look at the efficiency, just as Jeff had mentioned, I want to show you a couple of usage uh, cases and, and things we've actually seen here, scenarios that we've seen. 200 virtual machines and only 20 terabytes. Well, actually it's 19, but I round it up so we don't make the competition look too bad. With the most advanced deduplication algorithm on the market, just like Jeff said, it's the smallest backup footprint you're going to find. I probably don't need to tell you which one of these bars is uh, VDPA, but I put it in here anyway. And one more thing for you, too. If, if I asked you to name a couple of situations where you'd actually need to recover your data, for those people that, believe it or not, there are people out there that don't have a data strategy, a data recovery or, or backup strategy in place, uh, they'd probably name the same ones that I did. You know, fire, hurricanes, floods, uh, an angry ex-employee. As good as uh, the last one actually can be, it's, it's kind of interesting. 
because a colleague of mine brought up a good point at our last presentation, and he said, it's not always an act of God that you need to recover from. See, he told me about a fellow that had his work a laptop stolen. Now, sure, you need to get that laptop back, but first and foremost to your business is not that piece of hardware, it's the data that was on it. And the faster you get that data back, the less you're going to lose. Now, VDPA can recover a 30 gig virtual machine in less time than it takes to listen to your favorite song. And hey, you're still going to have 16 minutes left over compared to the competition, so you can listen to a couple. And I'm going to ignore the obvious and move on, but just to say that this is the kind of speed that you can and efficiency that you can expect from the product. And how is it all possible? You know, like we mentioned, the combination of EMC and their Avamar technology brings us variable length deduplication. That's four times more efficient, and it's faster. Six times faster. Now, how? Well, we did something else that the other guys didn't, too. Uh, change block tracking on the restore side, as well as the backup side. It's fast recovery of only what you need recovered, no extra wasted time. And all of this, the best part is, like you saw, is uh, pretty much automatic. Just like the encryption uh, and the backup verifications. Uh, you don't need to fidget with unnecessary block settings or any of that kind of stuff. You don't need to manually check if your backup's actually backed up. VDPA is going to do it all for you so you can enjoy your coffee. And who's your target in all of this? Well, it's easy, and uh, I think, uh, Jeff, you can probably back me up here. Any customer working in a VMware environment with up to about 1,000 virtual machines you should be good for. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, so now that we know how it works and why it's efficient, we want to know what do we need to get profitable. So when a customer of ours actually asked what a VDPA specialist job was, uh, I joked to them that it's my job to make backup software exciting. Uh, thankfully, this is the part where VDPA doesn't make that too hard. And I want to start off by giving you a question for your end users. This is something I think should actually excite them. What would you do with $60,000? So going back to that uh, 200 VM situ uh, uh, situation that we had earlier, with the reduced space and requirements VDPA brings, the low li lowest licensing cost out there for what you're getting, lowest CapEx and oh so low uh, OpEx, that's the question your end users are going to need to answer because that's what we have on record as the total cost of ownership savings for that environment. And that's just with entry-level storage setups. Higher tiered storage would help them save even more, and as they grow, the TCO savings only get bigger. We actually got a nice compliment from uh, Trevor Potts at the register. He said, uh, for real backups, VMware offers vSphere data protection. The deduplication levels are amazing. And I think amazing is a good word to sum VDPA up. Because when we say lowest licensing cost, we mean it. You can find the competition priced upwards in the range of like $1,500 to $2,000, if not more in some cases. But we're going to give you everything that they do and ask you for a lot less. $1,095. Just one version, license per processor like vSphere, so it's an easy upsell for you. Six vSphere licenses for your three hosts, no problem. Six licenses for VDPA to back it up. It's simple. And even better, there's a 60-day trial available which you can use not only to test the product out for yourself, but also to do a rip and replace before your customer is forced to renew inferior products at higher costs. I actually had a chance to speak with a customer, um, this was a couple of weeks back, and they went through a rip and replace process, which was great, because I've been looking for, uh, for a situation like this, um, using VDPA. They told me that 60 days was perfect, because that's usually the, uh, the backup retention policies of many companies. Uh, they got the trial version in, installed, they used it for the 60 days, retired the old solution, and they got their new licenses in for VDPA. They also said, thanks to the uh, low overhead and optimization, that they experienced like, no downtime and no slowdowns running it concurrently with the previous product. I think that's a testament to the good software engineering on our part. So that's how your customers become more profitable, but you know, the more important thing is how do you? I'm going to show you that too. For the professional partners, uh, VMware partners that are on the call with us today, um, there's a VDPA promo that's going to give you 20% off on the back end. And this is going to run until June 30th. For enterprise partners, you're actually going to be eligible for up to 50% off. So I gave you that $1,095 MSRP, and now I'm telling you that you're eligible for up to 50% off. And that's 40% right off the front end. You've got your VDPA promo, that's your 20% right there. Advantage Plus, 10%. New customer for 10%. And then your competencies as well can add to that. 
Um, this is obviously for deals over 6K that are registered and approved by VMware. And remember, that's 6K MSRP. So VDPA's licensing strategy makes it very easy to break that 6K mark and to make an amazing profit while you do it. Um, all I'll say about it is I encourage you to re reach out to your training camp coaches or your VMware PSCs for more information because this is where you're going to make your money. But we're not done yet. On top of all of that, you're also going to get sales rewards. These are points awarded to the fine people at your company for selling VDPA. The points are redeemed on VMware's site for cool toys like iPads, uh, Visa gift cards, travel discounts, and so on. And with the current promotion that we've got for VDPA, you're going to get 750 points per license sold. 750. Well, let's put it in perspective. If you check out VMware's site, an iPad itself is about 1,000 points. And if you look at an average small VDPA deployment of six licenses, well, when I do the math, it looks like uh, Christmas is coming early. And that's it. If there's one thing I want you to take away from today's VDPA presentation, it's that VDPA is backup done right for your VMware environment. With the advent of the software-defined data center, don't leave backing your critical data up to costly, time-consuming third-party offerings. It all comes down to making good software great, and at the end of the day, when your clients ask themselves what they're going to do with the extra time, money, and storage, you can tell them, make space for it. And with that, I'm going to throw it over to uh, Frank at Trend Micro. Awesome. Thanks, Ray. How you doing? How's everybody doing today? So what we're going to talk about right now is we've talked about how to recover the data, how to back up the data, and we saw some good presentations about how we can do that. But what we're going to talk about now is how do we secure that data? And that's really where Trend Micro comes into it. Now, there's a much bigger presentation deck that's associated with this that, are, with this that everyone's going to get. It's about 29 slides. I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to show you one slide. And then we're going to look a, bit, a little bit at our console. But what I wanted to focus on is really where does deep security fit into the grand scheme of things. And as you can see right here, it's really it covers all the bases of a virtual migration. So from physical to virtual to private or public clouds, deep security is going to have a solution and something for you to be able to protect your desktops. I like to say one ring to rule them all, right? One place to go to get all these things managed. And as you see down there at the bottom, those are all the different modules that deep security makes up. There's four of those modules, six features, and we're going to look at those in a little bit more detail here in a sec. Those four modules are an anti An anti-malware with IPS, a host firewall with log inspection, and then there's integrity monitoring, and there's also, uh, I'm sorry, there's integrity monitoring, log inspection, a firewall with IPS, and an anti-malware with what we call a solution we have called web reputation. And those are all things you can take advantage of. The application scanning and data protection is, comes from a solution we have called Deep Security for Web Applications. And that's relevant because if you think of the threat that just came out recently, Heartbleed, that's actually how we're able to protect and combat that threat is with our Deep Security for Web apps. So we're definitely looking at the virtual space and provi providing protection across the board. So Ray, if you can go ahead and give me back the presentation rights, I'll go ahead and show my desktop real quickly, and we'll take a look at the Deep Security interface itself. The first thing you want to notice about the deep security interface is the setup. Now we're looking at a Windows interface. Pop that up here in a second. And this has the ability to go either on a physical machine or a virtual machine. Let me make sure everybody can see that. I'll see that I'm sharing. So that can go on either a physical machine or a virtual machine and allow us to now dig down into the environment and get a deeper introspection. There we go a deeper introspection of protecting it. So what you're looking at right now is my management console. And as I said before, I can put this on a physical or virtual box. This can also go on Windows or Linux. And one of the first things you want to do is get this synchronized up with vCenter. Now, my vCenter environment, we were talking earlier when Jeff was showing his presentation, he was in a 5.5 environment. And I like to show customers that right off the bat, you can see we are also in a 5.5 environment. And I'm protecting it with our deep security solution without an agent. And Trend Micro is the only solution today that can do that in a 5.5 environment agentlessly. I know there's some people who are trying to do some things, but we've been doing it for the last four or five years and have kind of revolutionized that market. Now, what you'll notice here from the console is the visibility that I have into my environment. And when I first get this set up, one of the first things I want to do is sync this up with vCenter. So I'm actually going to sync this up at that vCenter level and get the inventory from vCenter. So now this deep security manager is going to go out and be able to have that inventory. And it's not until I start pushing down things, telling it to manage my actual, ver my actual VMs, do I actually kick anything on. Until then, it's just unmanaged. So we're not doing anything intrusive to the environment at this point in time. But what we need to do to make sure that this solution is going to work and to make it work agentlessly 
And again, since we already talked about backup and recovery, and we talked about how that's going to free up performance and all those great things, now let's talk about well, what happens when I put security in there? What happens when I take a traditional physical endpoint and I try to put that in my virtual environment where we get two major issues? We get AV storms. We get resource contention, and if you don't know what those terms mean, that basically mean in regards to AV cont uh, resource contention. Excuse me, all those VMs are now competing, competing for resources from that host, and they're all trying to do it at the same time. So, what do you think happens to that host? It does nothing. It sits down in the corner and cries if it could, because there's nothing that can happen on it right now. Same thing with AV storms. Everybody's trying to get updates. Everybody's trying to scan, and pretty much you've just killed the host entirely. Well, with the Trim Micro solution, because we're able to provide an agentless security solution, and we're able to do that because we're leveraging vShield's endpoint. So we're going to take vShield, we're going to take that endpoint driver from vShield, and we're going to stick that on each one of those ESX hosts that we want to protect. Then we're going to come into our solution, stand up this manager that we're looking at right now, and we're going to import two softwares in here. We're going to import Trim Micro's filter driver and a virtual appliance. And we're going to leverage those two pieces of software here. After we've synchronized it up with vCenter, we're then going to go in and go grab an unprepared ESX host. And you see I have three of them in here. And I'm basically going to go tell that host to go ahead and install the filter driver. So I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to hit my actions. I'm going to prepare that ESX host. It's going to take you through a wizard. We're going to do this for you. And essentially, the next screen is going to tell me, hey, stop, don't do anything. I'm going to put this host down in a maintenance mode. I'm going to put this host down in maintenance mode, and I'm going to install that Trim Micro filter driver on it. I'm going to restart that host, and everything will be kumbaya after that. And then your next option is, do I want to go ahead and deploy that virtual appliance? Because that's what you're going to need to provide agentless security onto each one of those ESX hosts. So again, we don't have to install any agents on those Windows environments. We don't have to install any agents on the Linux servers when we're talking about giving them a firewall and things like that. All we need to do is cut on VMware tools and let that filter driver turn on. That filter driver will talk back to our appliance, and any of the policies that our appliance distributes will go ahead and be taken care of. So again, we don't have to bog that system down with anything. So if you think about it, and you think about all of the different modules that I mentioned Deep Security has in it, so I'll pull up a policy just to kind of reflect that again for you. So let's pick on this Exchange Server policy here. And all these different modules, an anti-malware module, a web reputation module, a firewall, intrusion prevention, integrity monitoring, these are all things that do not require an agent on these guest VMs. If I was doing a traditional world today, I would look at maybe a Trend Micro, a McAfee or Symantec or someone doing the anti-malware protection. Maybe I'm looking at Cisco or Checkpoint to help me with the firewall and the IPS. And then I've got maybe Tripwire or someone trying to help with the integrity monitoring. In each one of those worlds, I have an agent, a security agent on each one of those guests, all competing for resources, all competing for space, all trying to do whatever they were intended to do. Whereas in this world, these are all the same features and capabilities coming from one management console, one place to do things. As your customers migrate into their environment, let's say right now they're 90-10 physical to virtual, and they're just now getting into the virtual space. Well, that's fine. Deep Security has an agent in it. It's the same management console. They'd be able to set up the policies the same way. And as they virtualize and they go P to VM, and they start virtualizing those workstations and those desktops, they'll be able to use the same product. All they'll have to do is make those adjustments to the ESX host I mentioned, put those drivers on there, and then they can migrate those virtual machines over to that host and still protect it from the same solution. Well, what happens when they start getting into vCloud? Well, guess what? I can add vCloud in here just as easy as I can vCenter. Well, what happens if they have multiple vCenters? Really not an issue. It's really dependent upon the size of the database that we point this to. And we have two options, three if you want to be technical, SQL, SQL Express, or Oracle. And the size of that database is what's going to really determine on how many different virtual appliances and how many different agents I can manage and how many different vCenters I can have. So it's really the scalability of this solution and also the integration that we have. VMware is one of our customers. As we start to build out VMware as NSX and some of these other components and they start doing auto security provisioning and things like that, well, guess what? This deep security solution will fit right into that mold, and we'll be able to automatically apply security policies to the hosts as they populate. We'll be able to automatically apply policies to the guests as they populate. So really the, the, the point of this is, and it's kind of hard for me guys to talk really about deep security in 10 minutes, all right? Um, I've, sp I've spent hours talking, talking about this thing, but really the benefit and the beauty of this is really something that's going to seamlessly integrate into your systems. It's going to seamlessly integrate into the virtual environments. It's going to provide security. It's not going to add any additional resources or any additional bogging down, if you will, of systems and services. And we're actually going to free things up. 
You can go through the slide deck that we're going to provide for you, and you'll see a lot of different things around performance and around provisioning, things of that nature, how we work with storage. But really the thing to take away from it is when I take the term micro security solution and I apply it into my virtual environment, not only am I going to free up the resources, not only am I going to free up performance, I'm also providing full security features into that environment. And in some cases we've seen in VDI environments, and definitely share this with your customers, sometimes 12 times more guest v VMs can be ran on hosts. And we have numbers and things that will support that. So it's really as we really dig down and start, again, adding security posture to all of these different VMs and guest VMs as we're trying to protect, we're also going to free up performance around them. Now, the last thing I'll show you from an administrative perspective, and you guys can go out and do 30-day evaluations. Your customers can kick the tires all day on this. We have a team here where I'm at in Texas. We do evaluations every day. We average about maybe two or three per person a day of getting deep security installed in an environment. We'll be happy to help you out. There's also professional services you can take advantage of. And you can sell out to your customers, and we'll deliver that as well. But one of the things I really like from an administrative perspective to show customers is when we start getting into what happens as new machines are spun up in my environment and created and added, what's nice about the deep security solution is not only is it going to help you from a security perspective, but also it's going to help you from an inventory perspective when you really think about it. So as I'm adding new VMs and creating them in my system, the deep security solution can automatically activate those machines, assign them policies, assign them to any relay groups or computer groups, and do that based on different conditions that you could set. Those conditions can be anything from the naming conventions of the machines you have, vCenter, your cloud instance, if you have an appliance available and it, can, and it can protect that guest. Those are all different criteria and conditions you can put in place. So again, it's not only just, hey, we're going to help you from a security perspective, but we're also going to help you keep your arms around your virtual environment. And then one of the main features that I would position to my customers, because you hear all day about our agentless AV and things like that, and that's great. It's a great feature. But in my opinion, truly, what really makes the deep security solution shine excuse me, is the virtual patching capability. So what I'm going to do is go out here and grab a policy for you real quick and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Deep security has a module in it. It's our RPS module. And not only is it going to provide your intrusion detection and prevention, that's great, all agentless, right? Don't have to worry about that. But the greatest part about this is the virtual patching. What does that mean? Well, this is what it means. I'm going to go out with this solution, and I'm going to run what we call a recommendation scan. So if you can follow my mouse down here in the middle. And that recommendation scan is going to run on all of the systems that are currently running this policy. So in this case, everybody running the Windows anti-malware protection policy. And it's going to go out and scan all those systems and come back and let me know what vulnerabilities, what exploits they're susceptible to. Now it's going to say I can either automatically or manually, and you can set that here, put policies in place to shield those machines from those vulnerabilities until we can go through the patch management and controls that we need to. Now, of course, we're talking about virtual machines, guys, and you know it's an image in lots of cases. But in my experience, and I'm sure a lot of folks on the call's experience, that still takes some processes to go through. And as you're going through those processes, the vulnerability, the exploit, is doing whatever it was intended to do. But now this will create a policy that will say, you know what, let's shield these machines from that vulnerability until we can do what we need to get done. And the nice part about it is, let's say there's 50 machines running running this policy right now, and I only get to patching 49 of the VMs, for instance. Well, the policy doesn't do anything. It doesn't care about 49 or 50. It needs everybody. So until everybody is patched, then the policy will come back to you and say, let's unassign this policy and take it off. So you'll never have a situation where you've got thousands of policies being ran. And I mention that because if I go over here to my main repository of rules, and it's, go, it's done by page, but this comes up to about 3,600 different IPS and IDS rules that we will leverage for you. And this is all done by Trend Micro. You don't have to worry about updating this. This is all something that we'll do for you. And for your customers, if they don't see anything here out of the 3,600 rules that, they ha that we have, they can create their own. And it's nice and easy to do so. They can bind it to any application. They can create a, go ahead and create one if one's not listed. They can give it a priority score and a severity level. They can determine if it's an IPS rule, which it is by default, or make it an IDS rule. And then when it gets down into the rule set, you can do signatures, you can do patterns, or you can do custom XML scripts. So there's a lot of detailed integration that the product has for you if you want to get down into that level. If not, you know, agentless AV, being able to protect my systems and not bogging them down with the additional agents is really the benefit. But there's other things that you can take advantage of. Out of the box, there are 10 different uh, compliance regulations that we're adhering to that will help your customers. I've had auditors come to me quite often on demos and POCs, and basically they've told customers to come look at Trend Micro to pass the audit. They have never failed Trend Micro and, uh, for audits and virtualization as far as what we're hearing. So there's different things like that you can take advantage of. I don't want to sit here and ramble. I don't have too much 
much time. I don't know have anybody with a time on me right now, so I don't know how good I'm doing. But there's definitely some slides and things that everybody can take a look at, take advantage of. If you have any questions, reach out to your trend reps, reach out to, reach out to your Ingram folks, and we'll be happy to get you set up for any demos, any proof of concepts, or really, or just conference calls if that's just something we need to do and help your customers understand really where the trend micro solution fits. So if I were to let you everyone leave with something from this you know brief conversation we've had here, I would say when it comes to virtualization security, trend micro, plain and simple, agentless protection. I'm providing you performance, so you're going to get performance back. You're also going to get reduction in resources utilized. There's a report called the Tali Report that I would uh, recommend that you guys go look up and find, and you'll see some additional information around that. But it's really, again, the seamless integration from security perspective and being able to free performance back up in your environment and really just helping your customers feel more comfortable about their virtualization journey. We've all seen the slides, right, the journey, the, the journey through the cloud, if you will. And as they go through that journey, we just want to make sure that as they get to the different streets and roads, they're not going to get mugged, right? And that's kind of what we're going to help you out with. It's kind of help you follow that journey the way you need to. And they'll feel more comfortable adding VM app and getting into VCHS and some of the other things that, you know, you can take advantage of from VMware. But until you're comfortable securing, you know, this one piece of it, you don't really feel that more, much more comfortable, excuse me, going much further. And that's really where we're going to help you guys out with and help your customers. So I appreciate everyone's time, and I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Ray. Thanks very much. And, Frank, I'm just going to make one recommendation, that uh, before you go to your Ingram reps, why don't you come to your tech data reps? <laughs> Did I say Ingram? I am. So, oh my God! And this is recorded. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I cover tons and tons of partners. I'm very embarrassed for saying that, and nope. uh, I'm sure Mr. R B Mr. R B C is cursing me out right now. I'm very, <laughs> very sorry about that, guys. I cover all the partners, so uh, that's my excuse, man. Sorry, guys. No problem. No problem. <laughs> oh man, I'm embarrassed. Talk from you if I could, if I could, and um, yep. and Jeff, uh, we have uh, we have a couple of questions. If you've uh, got a second to answer. Yep. Go ahead. Um, so we had a question, uh, how does VDPA work with cloud, uh, sorry, work with vCloud? So I'm going to assume uh, vCloud Director there. And to be quite honest about that, it does not support vCloud Director, so it has no concept or, or knowledge of the vCloud Director um, constructs, so such as a V app, those types of things. Um, so in other words, you would not be able to back up vCloud objects, if you will. It works at the vCenter level. Um, now, that being said, we're, we're thinking about some, maybe some future integration there, but at this point in time, it, it is simply not supported. Awesome. Um, okay, and the second one that we had, the second one that we had was, um, can we do location-specific deduplication? Uh, sometimes branch offices keep backups separate from uh, headquarter backups. Yeah, certainly. So the way that would be accomplished is to deploy more than one VDP advanced appliance. You can actually deploy up to 10 VDP advanced appliances per vCenter. So you could have a VDP advanced appliance at each location there. And then if you replicate that back in, there's no sense of multi-tenancy within a single appliance, but you could potentially have maybe a VDP advanced appliance that acts just as the receiver for those remote or branch offices. And then another VDP advanced appliance that backs up the VMs in that, that main site or that main data center there. So that would be one way to segregate those, uh, those, those two chunks of data, if you will. Awesome. Um, we, had, uh, we had two more. The, uh, the first is, uh, does, it, does VDPA offer a sandbox mode on uh, restores? Yeah, so the way that would work is actually there's a couple things, a couple ways to answer that. So you can, you can do a restore without connecting the network interface card. So that would all intent, for intents and purposes um, isolate that VM there. So that way, if you have another, you know, identical virtual machine, same name, IP address, or whatever, uh, there would be no interference there. So that's one of the options when you do a restore, is to restore that virtual machine disconnected from the network. As a matter of fact, I believe that's the default setting. Uh, the other thing I'll point out, too, is that when it comes to doing restores with VDP Advanced, we can actually set up an automated job that will, let's say, on a weekly basis, automatically restore a virtual machine and then verify that that machine successfully restored by listening to VMware Tools heartbeats. That is also done in, in, in what, what I would consider a sandbox environment, so, so disconnected from the network, in other words. And then what that does is that does validation for us. So it's what we call an automated backup verification. So instead of having to go in manually maybe, uh, you know, once a week or once a month and testing your restores, you can set up VDP Advanced to do that for you. And again, that's going to be in a disconnected state there, so that way it does not interfere with production uh, environments. Okay, that's. Um, I hope those answered your questions. I don't see that we have any more at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, 
Well, first of all, I'm going to let you guys know that the uh, the Apple TV is going to be drawn after we're uh, we're done today. We're going to take the uh, the attendee list, pick somebody at random, and we'll send an email to all of you telling you who actually won the uh, the Apple TV. Uh, I'll say congratulations in advance to whoever that uh, lucky person happens to be. And uh, I want to thank everyone again on the call for attending uh, the the VMware VDPA. Um, presentation along with uh, Trend Micro and their deep security, I think the two of the offerings together uh, make for a really compelling solution. Um, it's going to help people out uh, both from a TCO perspective uh, on the end user side and as well as the profitability side for uh, all of you resellers out there in the field. Um, and uh, definitely a huge thanks to, uh, to Jeff and to Frank for, uh, for supporting today and uh, bringing us all that amazing information. I uh, really appreciate it, guys, and I know everyone here did too. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. Happy to help. Next time I'll remember who I'm, who I'm working for. So sorry <laughs> no, about that. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, and I uh, hope we see you at our next huddle. All right, guys.